Think back to when castles made of brick, stone, and wood were cutting-edge creations. Many of them were still around today, showing how amazing they were. Now, in our digital age, games like Kingdom Come Deliverance allow us to explore these old structures and medieval towns in a whole new way. Let's dive in to see how engineering has changed connecting the past to the digital world. Here we are in the middle of a small town, and the ground here looks soft, clayey, and silty. When building on a weak soil like this, engineers often use a method called ground improvement. Examples of ground improvement include compacting the soil, adding sand or gravel, or using stone columns. These techniques make the ground stronger so buildings can stand safely on top. These rocks under the house are an early version of what we now call a raft foundation. Today, a raft foundation is made of reinforced concrete spread across the entire area under a building. Here, we see rocks held together with a paste known as mortar in construction terms. This door frame is made of thick wood. The sides of the frame are called jams, and the top part is called the header. Now, some viewers might call the top part a lintel, but there's a difference. Headers are non-load-bearing, while lintels are load-bearing. Why isn't this header load-bearing? Because instead of sitting directly on top of both jams, it is pinned to the sides, which reduces its ability to carry loads. Going in... Here's one for us, we got a sliding lock behind the door but there's no keeper on the other end of the door frame, which means this lock isn't securing anything anytime soon. This thick horizontal piece is called a beam. It is supported by girders, which are horizontal pieces running between the columns. In this case, the columns are likely placed at the corners of the house. The horizontal piece on top of the beam is called the slab. Here, it is made of rounded wood. Let's go upstairs and see what we got. The circular wooden slabs here are covered with what looks like mud or clay. Adding mud, clay, or sand levels the uneven surface and makes it smoother to walk on. This was a common and practical method in earlier times, especially in traditional or rural construction. It also provides insulation, keeping the upper floor warmer in winter and cooler in summer and it's affordable using local materials. However, it can pose challenges like added weight to the building, moisture absorption, and maintenance issues. A barrier or a handrail could also be implemented here to avoid any falling accidents from the homeowners. This roof is called a thatch roof, made from materials like nipa palm or grass, and has been used for thousands of years. It is eco-friendly and great at regulating temperature. In the Philippines where I come from, a house with this roof is called a nipa hut, Known for its simple, lightweight design, perfect for tropical climates. We are approaching the castle and it is noticeable that the gate is missing a lock, which could be a concern for securing the territory. The stonewall construction is also built here, a common method for castles designing for a strong defense. This bridge is a hybrid design, combining truss bridge and a draw bridge. The truss section with its triangular cross bracings transfers loads efficiently and connects to vertical supports or foundations, which anchor the bridge to the ground for stability. Near the castle entrance, the bridge transitions into a drawbridge, featuring a lifting mechanism with chains to open or close the access. We are now entering the castle. The castle's exterior is mainly built with stone, wood, and some metal, showcasing the kingdom's resourceful use of natural materials readily available in the area. Having a wooden staircase connected to a stone wall typically involves using anchor bolts, screws, or metal brackets. Holes are drilled into the stone, anchors are inserted, and the wood is securely fastened. This ensures stability and a strong connection. The thick walls of this house are likely designed for better defense and to offer insulation against harsh weather conditions. The kitchen could be improved by adding a chimney to allow the smoke to escape outside. Let us go upstairs. Inside the castle's dining area, the spacious interior is welcoming. However, the wooden floors could be a concern as spilled liquids like what we can see here may drip down to the lower floors. There are two chains hanging down from the ceiling, but only one chandelier is in place. Fun fact about chandeliers, they originated in the 18th century and they were once considered a symbol of wealth and luxury. Here's a painting that seems inspired by the Last Supper. 
though the guy blowing his trumpet in someone's ear might not end well. There's also a figure of a person here with one pale leg and the other in red. I actually once saw a kid who colored a picture of a person's skin with rainbow colors for an exam and still got a perfect score. Here's an old toilet design. Since it drops onto an open roadway, you definitely don't want to be nearby when someone is using it, especially if it's the wet stuff coming out. Our guy here is dressed as a knight. Let's go for some action or sparring. I'd like to train you, just like practice. Right, let's get to it. Okay, sparring is over because there's a horse inside the training ground. So from the sturdy stone walls and wooden beams of medieval castles to the sleek steel and concrete structures of today, we've seen how construction has evolved over centuries. The methods, materials, and designs have changed, but the core principles of stability, durability, and creativity have always remained. As we move into the future, who knows what innovations will shape the world of construction next. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more, and I will see you on the next one.